All right, so today uh, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. Um, I'm just gonna go through some of my layers that I used instead of playing through the uh, actual edit. Um, so I'm hoping that this way I can cut the time a little bit and kind of give you a more focused tutorial. If you guys find my video helpful, or if you want free Photoshop assets in the future, please subscribe to my channel. All right, so here is the image that I started out with. Um, so the first thing that I did was I kind of set it up in Camera Raw to kind of give it that base um, look that I wanted in the first place. So I will go through camera raw really quickly just to kind of show you what I did. So here's before and here's after. All right guys, so I decreased the exposure um, right away. Uh, I increased the contrast to get kind of get rid of those really dark blacks um, I increase the highlights, increase the shadows, whites, and I, I'm doing the highlights and the whites just to kind of uh, make her face pop a little bit better. And I increase the blacks as well because uh, it was just way too dark. I increase the uh, clarity a little bit because um, with all the adjustments, it was looking really flat. So I wanted to increase the clarity. So with these settings, I was able to raise the blacks without it becoming too flat. All right, I decreased the vibrance a little bit because I wanted to go for a more moody look. I increased the luminance in this image specifically because the noise was really, really high. And that is all the adjustments that I did in Camera Raw. I made a 50% gray layer by pressing Control Command plus the new layer icon. And then going to overlay blending mode and fill with 50% uh, gray. And with that, I used um, a white brush that's really soft and just kind of painted in uh, some some highlights to kind of better highlight her face. All right, so I made a curves adjustment layer, inverted the mask here with controller command I and increased the value up here and painted in where I wanted to lighten the image. All right guys, so uh, these other layers don't have anything on them. I just kind of left it there because I didn't feel like deleting it. So with this exposure, I wasn't happy with the uh, amount of brightness in her face. Increased the exposure a little bit. I added a black, black mask by pressing Control or Command I and painted with white where I wanted it. All right, so with this layer, I put it into soft light blending mode and I painted with a red color, uh, a little bit darker about right here. And if you don't see this, you can go window color and it, it will uh, come up here on the side. So <clears throat> I painted with a kind of uh, desaturated red uh, that's a little dark and I gave her face a little bit more color in the areas that I thought were a little too blown out by the exposure level that I was putting in before. So at this point I was kind of experimenting with what I wanted to do and um, I wanted to give the image some more some light um, that wasn't already in the scene. So in order to do that I added a, a hue and saturation adjustment la uh, layer um, and I uh, clicked colorize and increase the saturation 
and the lightness. So what that will do is it will um, make this to where you can give it any color that you want to. And you can increase the saturation and the lightness and apply this effect to the places you want to add light. What I did was I painted where the light areas on her face was and on her hair here. And I double, uh, double clicked the layer and went into this layer style tab and separated these two with the arrow. I press alter option and separated it and just kind of made it to where it only appeared in the light areas of the image. So when you slide this over, it's taking this effect out of the shadow areas. And if you do it on this side, it takes it out of the highlighted areas. And I did the same thing with orange on that side. So after this, I went ahead and cut the subject out of the image. All right, so what I did to do that is I pressed this uh, new object selection tool and I made sure it was in lasso mode and I just went around the subject like this really quickly and it made a selection for me. So it made this selection for me and what I did from there is I went select and mask and I used this, this tool here and what it's gonna do is it's gonna get rid of all the background for me So I just go around the edges of the image. And I just got rid of all that background. Sometimes you have to uh, erase it even more, which is fine. And I wasn't super perfect down here because uh, that wasn't really the focal point of the image. But I made sure to get this uh, hair selection really, really nice. And I ended up, sometimes you don't have to do this, but for this image, I ended up using decontaminate colors. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make these colors that uh, had the background color in it uh, the color of the cutout. So it's less noticeable. All right, so I cut that out. And that was my final selection that I ended up with. So it's not super perfect, but um, these areas right here, uh, people don't really notice that when you have a background image. All right, so after that, I wanted to kind of set up the composition how I wanted it. So I went through a couple different backgrounds and uh, this is the one I ended up with. Uh, it had that same color to it and it was a city shot. And it really fit, uh, fit really well with the image and the look that I was kind of going for. So I, I changed the background to kind of match the subject a little bit. Um, so this is the full image and this is the before and after my changes this is the after. So as you can see, it kind of matched the subject a little bit better. Um, I did the same things. I reduced the exposure, reduced the contrast and increased the highlights and increased the blacks as well, just so that the blacks aren't as dark because if the the background is is super dark and the subject is not it's going to look weird so i wanted to change that and i also de decreased the vibrance as well i added a blur by by going filter blur gallery uh field blur and it, 
this way it kind of makes it look like it's it has a good depth of field um, and you just kind of have to gauge that with the image you're working with so if it's a wider shot you're going to want to do this less and if it's a tight shot like this you'll want to do it more and that way it's going to look more photorealistic so i blurred this by 50 pixels i increased the increase the light bokeh and increase the bokeh color as well so here's the before and here's the after of all those effects so as you can see um it fit the image a lot better so i wasn't exactly happy with um all those changes um so i the way i color grade every time almost is I had a color balance adjustment layer and a curves adjustment layer. So on the color balance, I just increase the greens a little bit. And when I'm doing this, I'm looking at the subject and trying to match the background as best as I can. Um, so I increase the greens by two and increase the yellows by seven. So that's negative seven. Um, and then, as I was saying before, the blacks didn't match, and you can really pick up on those kinds of things. So in order to match the blacks a little bit better, I added a curves adjustment layer, and I raised this here. So, when I raise this, it's going to mat the black. So we're making the blacks go gray here. So this is the way I like to do it. So I add two, two points and then I just kind of add one more and I kind of match it this way. So this is what I came up with here and I felt like that it was really matching the scene and everything was going good together. Uh, here I just kind of took away some things that were distracting me. So I just uh, used a spot healing brush tool right here and I made sure the sample all layers were, was checked. And I painted over this area to kind of get rid of that. Then I added a, a new layer, uh, put it into dark and uh, blending mode, and I selected a color from here <clears throat> and just kind of painted in where I wanted it to be a little bit darker, uh, kind of fading into uh, a lighter scene. All right, so I wanted to add another uh, aspect of this image, and this is just a 3D model that I got off a stock uh, photography website, and they just give us these stock photography for free, and that's really cool. Um, so that's where I got that. Um, so I wanted to add this guy and as always, I add a color balance adjustment layer and a curves adjustment layer for my color grading. And with the color balance, I uh, decrease the blues and, or I increase the blues and uh, decrease this slider to increase the cyan to better match the scene. I, um, I was trying to match lighting uh, with the curves, so I just took this and went down. It's, it's important to do this because it's more realistic than doing this. After that, I, went to the, I wanted to add some of this lighting that was going on on the subject. So I did the same thing as before. I added a hue and saturation adjustment layer 
and I pressed colorize. I went to the color I wanted, increased the saturations, and increased the lightness to add a light spilling on this side. And I did the same thing with red on that side. And with these, I took away from the blacks so it's more realistic. And I took away from the, the blacks on the red side as well. So I wanted to add a little bit a little bit of separation between the both the subjects. So I just went in between both the robot and the subject and added a layer and put it into a screen blending mode. And I just painted a blue dot in between them to kind of separate uh, the two subjects. All right, so with this layer, it's just another 3D render that I got from a stock photography website. And this is really cool looking mechanical arm thing. Uh, you can't really see it in this image, but um, I added it because it looked like her arm was not there. So it's just a, a little thing that probably nobody will notice. Um, so, but I left it in there just because I didn't want to uh, go back and change it um, and what I did was add my color balance adjustment layer and my curves adjustment layer and it's, it's just the same thing I, I adjusted the the tones to match the scene and I adjusted the shadows to match the scene as well uh, here I, did, I, I was trying to do the lighting thing here as well just to make everything super consistent so if there's one thing that I do to an object, I'll do it to almost every single object. So hue and saturation adjustment layer, uh, colorize, I change the hue to red, uh, red orange kind of, uh, increase saturation, increase lightness for that effect. And finally, I did this really weird curves layer and I'm clipping all these down to, to the hand layer and you can just press alter option and go in between the layer to clip. And all these layers will clip all the way down to the hand layer. So I did this really weird curves adjustment layer because it was way too bright and distracting kind of. So I decreased the exposure on this right side and I matted it really, really crazy. And I decreased this value to kind of just um, make it less noticeable. All right, so I'm gonna skip this for right now and I'm gonna go straight to the next part that I did. All right, so on this next part, uh, I wanted to add this uh, like a chin mask type thing that I've seen in some cyberpunk edits. Um, so what I did was I just uh, added a new layer and I painted with a matte black. I just selected a color over here and painted in where I thought the mask would look good. And after that, I added a shadow. So here I just put this layer into multiply blending mode and painted um, the shadow to make it more realistic. So it gave it a lot more depth and it made it look like it was supposed to be in the image. And I reduced the opacity. All right, so uh, with this uh, mask that I painted, I added a image to it. And what this image is, is just a motherboard from a computer. And it's just a picture of a motherboard. And I clipped it to that layer. So with this, <clears throat> you're able to move this around as much as you want and it will stay within that clipped layer. Um, so this is what I came up with in the end. And uh, I just went through my color grading and my light painting. Um, so with the color balance adjustment layer, <clears throat> 
I decrease cyans, increase blues, um, and with the curves, I decreased it and painted black where I wanted to remove the darkness. All right, with the hue uh, and saturation, I wanted to add this blue light that was uh, that I've been doing and just to make it consistent. So I painted where her chin had light in the first place. Um, and the same thing with the red side, I just painted where I thought the light would be spilling in as well. So with this layer, I matted it because the blacks weren't matching the image. All right, so with this uh, uh, line group, it's below the mask. So I went below it to uh, put some shadows in where I need where I needed some shadows. So when I painted, it would be below that mask that I just made. So I put in a shadow there. Um, I put in some lines to kind of give it. Uh, different aspects of the image. And I merged those two and started to paint um, with a, clip, a clipped layer. So when I paint, it will be just in that line layer. And I, did, I ended up not liking the blue, so instead of changing the colors and everything, because I, uh, I had it where I wanted it, so instead of having to change the colors and painting it back in and everything, I just went into a hue and saturation adjustment layer and I clipped it to that and changed the hue to where I wanted it. All right, so here I wanted to do a kind of a, a heavy color grade to everything that I put into the image to kind of bring it together a little bit better. And in order to do that, I went into camera raw filter. I decreased the temperature up top and increased the tint. So that'll make it look kind of more like a blue hue to the whole image. I decreased the contrast to kind of make the blacks not as intense. Uh, highlights, increase the shadows increase the blacks, or I just want to kind of make the blacks a little less dark. All right, I, inc I increase the clarity because uh, I just, I really wanted those white, those highlights to kind of pop out a little bit better. And I increased the vibrance as well because it was a little too uh, desaturated for my taste. All right, I changed the hues on everything. Um, I made the, the blues a little bit more aqua uh, so with, with these, uh, I always like to use, uh, the luminance slider. Uh, so it kind of makes those blues pop and, um, some areas were a little too dark. So I really like to increase the luminance in some of these areas. I kind of want to pop out a little bit better. I usually always use a vignette on almost all of my images. All right guys, so um, for this high pass filter, what I did was I press Control or Command, Alt or Option, plus Shift plus E to merge everything that I had into a new layer. I uh, right click the layer, convert to smart object, and I go filter other high pass and a value of two. And I put that into hard light blending mode and re reduce the opacity to give the image a sharpness to it. That's how I sharpen almost all my pictures. All right, so I wanted to create some kind of um, effect uh, that kind of, that's kind of a little bit uh, dramatic. And the way to do that is um, it's a little subtle, but it really affects it in the end. I add a exposure adjustment layer, decrease the exposure, and on the mask I painted with black. 
um, a line across her face. All right, so with uh, a lot of uh, compositing, um, things tend to be a little bit more noisy than some of the other things. And that can really come out sometimes um, unless you have like a bunch of super consistent photos that you're working with. Uh, in this case, uh, with the 3D rendered uh, stuff, those are those have no noise and the subject had a bunch of noise. So for this image, I added a noise filter. So I go filter, noise, add noise, and on this one, I did Gaussian at about 15. And that is how I added noise to this image. And it really brought the image together. Um, so if you can see this, um, you can see that the subject and the 3D render and the background are a little bit inconsistent. Um, so I kind of, I, I wanted to bring that together with noise. And in my opinion, I think that this looks better with the noise. Sometimes I don't like it. Uh, so it just, you, just depends on what you like and what goes with the image. So you kind of have to, you know, determine with each image what you want to do. So with this, it was working good. Uh, it went with a style, so I was good with it. Um, so I just went in with a white brush and painted some highlights on her face, like where the highlights should go. And also on the face mask as well. So I added a new layer and put it into color dodge blending mode and added a little bit of uh, light to the sides of her hair. And with this adjustment, uh, exposure adjustment layer, I, I did the opposite of this one down here to kind of bring out the, that effect a little bit better because it was uh, a little too sub subtle in, in my opinion. And I wanted some brightness on her face. All right, so here's before, here's after before, after. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. If you found this video helpful or if you want some free tutorials and free Photoshop assets in the future, please subscribe to my channel. That would greatly help me and I would very much appreciate it. If you guys make any art, please tag me on Instagram at jfarmphoto. I would love to see that. That's all I have for you guys. Have a good one.